Hey, I'm Rachel, and welcome back to Project Profit. And this is a series where I take secondhand items and upcycle them for a profit, with the ultimate goal of giving all the proceeds to different nonprofit or charitable causes. And in today's episode, I'm working on this incredible, almost 100 year old vintage vanity. Man made another mistake. We've got all of our materials, I think. Dippy dip. For some reason, you'll need to close my eyes. The Ipswich pine, if I'm saying that correctly. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> a little backstory how I got this piece. It was actually donated by a local TSG fan. Her name is April. Shout out, April, my girl. Thank you. April tells me that this piece has been in her family for generations, and it's just come to a point where she doesn't have room for it anymore, and so she has kindly donated it. And it's safe to say, I think April and I agree that it has triple P. <laughs> Now, a couple weeks ago, I sent Anne and Rochelle to go pick up this piece for me, so thank you guys so much for doing that. Now, let's go take a closer look and see what kind of work needs to be done. Upon first impressions, I believe this vanity is of the Art Deco era, as furniture from this time often features these clean, sleek lines and organic curves. Right now, it's obvious this piece has seen a few eras. It's definitely been stained multiple times. It looks like it was even painted at one point. You can kind of see the way the old paint is trapped in some of the grain here. There's surface stains, the mirror is missing at the bottom, and it looks like there used to be a shelf at one point. Overall, it has a beautiful walnut veneer that unfortunately has some damage in wear in a lot of areas, but I think it would be so cool if I could try and bring this thing back to its original state. Right now, I just wanna get this whole thing disassembled, and then I'm gonna start working towards salvaging this old veneer. All right, now that our vanity is all in pieces and upon some further inspection, I've decided to just go straight in with sanding. So I'm first gonna go in with a 100 grit sandpaper to start, and I'm not gonna use anything lower than this just to not risk sanding through the veneer. A few important things to keep in mind when sanding wood is to always sand in the direction of the wood grain. This is going to help avoid damaging wood fibers as well as maintain the appearance of the grain and keep it beautiful, stunning, elegant, you know. And to get any nooks and corners, I'm just going in with a folded piece of sandpaper and getting those by hand. Okay, all of our pieces have been sanded and this thing is actually looking so good. But for now, I just wanna sit down and let you guys know what I'm thinking for restoring this piece. Obviously, refinishing the wood is a must. I'm not 100% what color I wanna restain it to, but we can worry about that later. When I look at similar pieces online from the Art Deco era, which is about the 1920s to the 1940s, it seems as though that the shelf that was missing actually used to be glass. So I think it would be the most ideal to try and replace that glass piece and keep it as original to its true form. Another great thing to do would be replace the broken mirror that's at the bottom there. I did spend some time just searching online and I found a secondhand sheet of mirror off of Facebook Marketplace and I'm gonna go pick that up first thing tomorrow. I'm gonna have to cut a very unique shape out of it that is mostly curved and we will worry about that later tomorrow. Now, in an ideal world, I would also find a secondhand sheet of glass that I could cut to size for this shelf, but because it is a shelf, I do need it to be shelf stable. And that would mean I need to cut tempered glass, which is actually just, in a, from a DIY perspective, pretty impossible. It's, it requires a lot of heat. Luckily for me, I actually just found tempered glass shelves, individual pieces sold from Ikea, they're not necessarily the right size. Either it's too big or a bit too short, but I'm determined to make this work because they're a great price. So when I go pick up the mirror tomorrow, we'll swing by Ikea as well. And then we can keep working on this thing. So, see you tomorrow. Good morning, guys. How are we feeling today? I wanna start by opening up the conversation to any comments about my new look. How do we feel about the bleached brows? Personally, I love them. And my mother 
doesn't. So I totally understand that it can go two ways. And if you aren't a fan, hopefully they grow on you by the end of the video. And if they don't, come back for the next episode and maybe then. And if not then, maybe the next episode and maybe the one after that because um, I think it's gonna stay for a little while. I don't know, I just really love it. So I am just about to pick up that mirror that we found on Facebook Marketplace last night. And then afterwards, I'll head to Ikea to pick up the glass shelves. Also, side note, I get so many compliments when I wear this hat out. It has the cutest little bunny ears and I just love how organic it is. And actually a mutual friend of mine handmade it. We've got all of our materials, I think, for the most part. And let's get back to the office because I am so excited to put this thing back together. Now, before I get too into anything, I'm gonna take this stainable wood filler to fix the damaged edges in the veneer. And I'm also gonna hit any other spots that could use a little bit of wood fill. So I need to let this wood filler dry for a little bit. And in the meantime, I wanna start thinking about this glass shelf because we already know it's a bit too short. And let me just go get it, we'll see. Okay, but if I rest this here, oh my God, heavy, heavy. See, we're short here, about like four inches. Originally I was thinking I'd maybe take this piece off and move it over, but I actually kinda of like it on the end here. And what if I actually add a piece and make this kind of like a little cubby. I think that could be really nice actually. One awesome part about working on this series for me, because I'm trying to save money any way I can, is that I have access to our whole storage room of leftover materials and supplies and tools. Oh my God, yes. And whenever you're using a power tool, especially one with a blade, make sure you tie up any loose hair as well as bunny ears. And then to finish it off, I'm gonna go in with some hand sanding and smooth out those edges. But now I'm just going to go and sand off all of our dried wood filler. May have made a mistake. I know my wood filler is too light and I knew that to begin with. And I just didn't feel confident in making my own because sometimes the glue doesn't want to take to the stain. So when I saw that we had a stainable wood filler, I thought that would be the right choice. But now I'm thinking any areas that are like really obvious, I'm gonna mix that wood filler that we already used with um, some of the sawdust and I think that will fix this problem. And honestly, every time I do stuff like this, it's always a learning experience. I hope you enjoy coming on the journey with me. <sighs> Subscribe if you also make mistakes <laughs> that you learn from. It's a little darker and crazy. Okay, so we know I want to replace the broken mirror and this is the shape that I have to recreate. Here's our mirror that we picked up this morning. Also, shout out to Joe who sold me this piece of mirror. He was selling two pieces for $6 each, which is a steal. And I only needed one of them and he happened to give me two. So that was very kind of him and awesome because I might mess this up. And I might mess it up more than once. So we're good now. Okay, so I have our mirror elevated on some scrap wood here. And then I just clamped the piece to the mirror itself, but I offset it a little bit so that I hopefully can actually just trace this piece but I had to account for our blade. Now to cut this, I'm going in with a pistol grip glass cutter and I will just dip this in some multi-purpose oil before I run it over the mirror. Yeah, I gotta flip this over. Okay, thanks for pointing that out, Raja. Right, because whatever, whatever shape you cut now is going to yeah, sit be on top. up and on it. I'm gonna do a little dippy dip. Now, if there's one thing I remember about doing this, it's that I want to apply a firm, and even pressure, and I only wanna try and do one pass. 
You don't wanna go over the same line multiple times. Also, there's gonna be a really ugly sound and that's what you're looking for. Can you hear it? It's funny, these kinds of sounds don't bother me. We have a video where Becky made a dupe of this really cool firm living pond mirror. And she goes in depth on how to use one of these and gives you tips on creating these curved lines. So definitely check that out if you wanna learn more. Before I go to break this, I'm just gonna condense down this mirror so that we're not breaking off like this large chunk and break off small pieces. I just have a skinny dowel here. I'm gonna slip it under and I'm just gonna break it over this. For some reason, I feel the need to close my eyes. Can I do that? Yeah, got your hands where you want. <laughs> Do you think we should both be on one end? You wanna come? We go. We're just gonna give it a little, a little jump. Oh. Whoop! <laughs> That's all I need to say to you. <laughs> now I'm just gonna add a couple lines going towards this nice curve that we have so I can break off smaller pieces and not try and get this whole thing in one. I feel like that might do us a disservice. Okay. Let's do this again. Oh, this is fun now. <laughs> a, a, look at that, that's perfect. Um, also, how are the brows? Are they growing on you yet? It's fine, it's fine, you don't, they don't have to. Now I just have some 120 on a sanding block and I'm just gonna sand off this rough edge so nobody cuts their fingers in the future. And definitely wear a mask when you're doing this because you don't want to breathe in any of these little glass particles. So these little caps are very broken at this point. So I think I'm just gonna glue the mirror onto the wood piece. And luckily I have some leftover mirror safe adhesive from when I redid the mirrored coffee table, if you remember that episode. So another thing I don't have to pay for. All right, I feel like this piece is sanded to the best of my ability. It's looking so good. Before I go for staining though, I wanna hit it with some mineral spirits. And this is just gonna prepare the wood surface. And cause it's pretty obvious that this has been painted before in the past and then removed after, there's actually some paint still stuck in the wood grain. So I think if I hit it with this mineral spirit, we'll get rid of that. And then it just dissolves on its own. When you are using mineral spirits, it's best to protect your hands. Make sure you're not breathing in any fumes and just go in with a lint-free rag. Because it's the bottom of the can, it's gonna be like really potent in color. But I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. I like that, okay. Yep, yep. Ipswich pine. We're gonna do the Ipswich pine. Okay, so I just went over the whole thing with the Ipswich pine, if I'm saying that correctly. I'm noticing some areas were more sanded than others, so the variation in color isn't exactly what I want, but I think if I go over it with some of this provincial, I can kind of even those spots out. So I'm gonna do that off camera, and I'm so excited to put this thing together tomorrow, so. Okay, so I am gearing up to sell this piece today and maybe you saw this, but in case you didn't, in a previous episode, I enrolled the help from a local vintage seller known as Mr. Vintage Toronto, also no known as Rob. And he helped me to assess and sell these really cool mid-century modern rosewood and leather chairs that I found for $6 a piece. Ever since that episode, Rob and I have stayed in touch, just kind of cheering on each other's DIY wins. And he actually knows that I've been working on this piece this week. So I want to give him a call and show him our updates and see what he thinks. And maybe he'll also help us sell this one because it's pretty special. I'm gonna go put the finishing touches on this piece and then let's give Rob a call. Two little updates though. Using this decorative glaze that I have left over, I'm just going in with a little paintbrush just to touch up any discolored areas that were maybe more wood filler or parts of the veneer that's lost some of its grain texture. This is just gonna help it blend better and a gel stain would also work for this step. And when the stain had at least 24 hours to dry, I finished this piece off with three layers of a satin top coat.
Let's give a little FaceTime. Hello? Hey, I know you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you doing? Great, thanks. So, you know I've been working on this awesome vanity this week, and uh -huh. I'm finished, and I'm really excited to show you the finished look. Fantastic, I love it. Effect. Yes. Seamless. Okay, so it sounds like we have the seal of approval from you. You certainly do. Those are very popular. What are your thoughts on maybe also helping us sell this? Because I feel like you might have the perfect audience. I would be so happy to partner again with you and uh, and to to uh, to provide this uh, out to the audience. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be an absolute hit. Awesome. Great news. Okay, well, I appreciate it so much. I guess next steps, I'm gonna style this piece, take some photos for you, and then we can get it posted? Absolutely, we'll get it up, and it's gonna look fantastic. What have we sold for? Have we been able to sell it? What's going on? No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually very excited to announce to you guys that it took almost no time at all, and the vanity is sold for $450. $450. Which is incredible considering we got the piece for free, and thank you again to April for that amazing donation. Just, just awesome profits here. Great margins, I think the business people would say, you know? And this brings our new project profit grand total to $2,732.64. And I'm starting to think it's time for us to round up another donation, so please make sure you keep leaving comments on which charitable causes and nonprofit organizations you think this money should go to. And one more big thank you to Rob for helping us to sell this unit. He's also known as Mr. Vintage Toronto on Instagram. Check him out if you haven't already. And Definitely check out the last episode where he helped me to sell this gorgeous Art Deco credenza unit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.